Right then, it's profile time, and whoa, we've got a profile for you. Now, we've got the other two in the Dean Windass Hall of Fame, so this week it's the final third of Manchester United's Holy Trinity. It's Dennis Law. Oh. Dennis Law. Dennis Poor. <laughs> Dennis Law, relegate. Um, <laughs> he was born on the 24th of February, 1940. Uh, 27 years before the Summer of Love. A long no, time. He would have been in his prime. The Summer of Love, yeah. He would have, yeah. <laughs> Probably all contributed. He, all again, he cared about was goals. Yeah. yeah. Maybe not like George Best in that <laughs> kind of <laughs> department. But, yeah. but who knows? We weren't there, man. Uh, he's from Aberdeen. Uh, the youngest uh, of uh, seven children. Six brothers and sisters. Um, they're from a very poor family um, up in Aberdeen. Uh, he uh, used to uh, tie a bit of um, wool together, like a ball of wool, and sometimes practice in the kitchen playing football. Just goes to show what a, a sign of the times. What he would say is that he used to practice um, and he knew he was getting good at it when he would <clears> go out of his way to do that but not knock anything off. Yeah. Off yeah. the kitchen sur- surfaces. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> must have been a nightmare for his mum. Yeah. <laughs> a waste of wool, if anything. Yeah, true. The but children must be clothed. But he would do it for hours. Mm. Which just show, goes to show you how much he, he loved it. He was dedicated yeah. and, and honing his skills um, all, all the time. He was given his first pair of boots quite um, famously by his neighbours. He couldn't afford any himself. Incredible what little acts of kindness can start, Pete. Mm-hmm. Eh? Uh, now, he was plucked from junior football in Aberdeen um, by Huddersfield Town, who uh, had Andy Beattie in charge, and Bill Shankly was his assistant. Now, he was only 16 uh, when he went down for a trial. In fact, he may have been 15, actually. He was 16 when he started playing there. Uh, he, he said that he, only, he wanted to be an architect because, realistically, you know, he was good at maths at, at school and technical drawing. Well, and also, the, the other issue yeah. was that he had uh, very, very poor eyesight. Oh, yeah, that's right. So he, squint, didn't he? Yeah, so he grew up on the same council sort of tenement as my grandparents. Right. Well, my, my nan, anyway. Okay. And I asked her about him. I've asked her about him loads of times. Okay. She said that she was very surprised when... Um, he he was given the football nod because he was almost not like I don't want to be rude about it. He wasn't like the runt of a litter, but he's always by far the smallest. Yeah, he had really poor eyesight. He, she said he's the sort of kid who was always running around with no shoes on with a really runny nose. <laughs> he was that sort of kid. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, so it was a big surprise. Well, so many people would say you know he, he, never did they see a less likely football prospect. You know, mm. weak and puny. Yeah, you know. But uh, he so he went down to Huddersfield um, when he was in his teens, mid teens. And it, the first time he'd been out of Aberdeen, it took 13 hours on the train from Aberdeen to Huddersfield. Oh, yeah, people underestimate, I mean, it's not that bad now, but people underestimate how far away Aberdeen is. Yeah. It's yeah. a good few hours beyond sort of Edinburgh. Yeah. yeah. But, the, but even back then, you know, obviously the transport links weren't um, what they are today. But he, he said that, because um, Aberdeen's quite a nice city, you know, it's on the coast. Um, it isn't, Mark, because I've been there. Okay. Well, according <laughs> to Dennis Law, it's quite a nice city. <laughs> it's nicer than Huddersfield, and I will fight you if you don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's Middlesbrough of Scotland for me. Oh, come on. It is. Oh, no, dis- no, dis- no disrespect for Middlesbrough. Like. Wrestle this back. Um, <laughs> but anyway, he, d- he didn't like Huddersfield. That was the point. Aberdeen right. was home to him. He liked being by the beach. And, uh, by the in in fairness, Pete, you've got to, to realise it's on the coast. It's very sort of... Um, one le- well, in one way, it's quite interesting to look at Aberdeen, for, especially from outside onto the seafront. And Huddersfield, in whenever it was, the, the 50s, mm. it, it's just factories and mills the whole mm. way. There's a lot of industry in Aberdeen. There's a lot of them, and I, you know, I, I, I'll come, I grew up on the coast. You know what I mean? It's not like, well, anyway, we're not here to compare other people. We're sure we're here. here. But the man <laughs> who's at the centre of the profile, City Smackdown on the football <laughs> ramp. Yeah. He preferred Aberdeen. Anyway, he, he was homesick. He was a young lad, yeah. all that way from home. Mm. And um, he said he was homesick for about five years, to be honest with you. No. As, as you'd imagine. Um, he was the youngest ever player for Huddersfield. He went uh, into the first team at a very young age. And they had a few young players at the time. Two 16-year-olds on the right side of attack, obviously yeah. including Law, uh, which was quite good. Um, and uh, he, had a, he had a pretty good time there. You know, he was starting to turn heads. You know, people would... Um People were getting to know his name. Uh, he, uh, at the age of 18, he was given his uh, first Scotland cap against Wales in a, in a 3-0 win, which he scored in. And he actually said, looking back on it, it was the proudest moment of his career to play for, for his country. Mm-hmm. You know, he said it was such an honour. Um, he scored 19 goals in 91 appearances for Huddersfield, and he was a very sought-after player then. And Bill Shankly left H- uh, Huddersfield Town and went to Liverpool and tried to take uh, Dennis Law with him. Um, but I don't think Liverpool had the funds. Law said that he fancied going to Arsenal because they were the big side at the time, or certainly one of the big sides under George Swindon at the time. But 
he said they sent up the assistant manager to talk to him, and he was put off by that. He said, well, if they're not going to send the, the manager himself, then you're obviously not that bothered. You know. He's used to brilliant assistant managers, though, as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right. Yeah, he yeah. just didn't compare. So Shanky didn't want him to leave, did he? When he did actually leave, Shanky said that, you know, if you tell him you're making a big mistake. Yeah. Because he said it, he said it was something like, oh, one, uh, one day it'll be a £100,000 player or something like that. Yeah, and, which of course he was. Yeah. Um, but he did sell, uh, they did sell um, Dennis Law to Manchester City for 55000 which was a British transfer fee at the time. So they Record. didn't... Uh, yeah, sorry, that's what I meant. Um, <laughs> uh, so they did get a, a fair old whack for him, and it was enough to finance uh, floodlights for Huddersfield's um, stadium. Putting a bit back. Exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. Now, uh, when he was playing for City, he did score six goals in an FA Cup tie once against Luton Town. <laughs> Although the match was abandoned after 70 minutes, so it oh, didn't go Floodlight gorgeous. failure? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Irony, yeah. Um, and Luton won the replay as well. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> that's sick, isn't uh, he's an absolute sick now. Um, now he he, um, he had a good time at City. He scored uh, quite a few goals there, nearly one in two, I think it was in the league. Um, but at the time, there was a, a very strict wage cap in England for for players across the country. This wasn't the case in Italy, where you could make about five times uh, the amount you could in the UK. So he went to play uh, for Torino. Now, bearing in mind, John Charles had kind of paved the way as well, mm. the, the, mm. the, big, the big Welshman. And he said, it's quite funny, when asked about this, he said he enjoyed his time in Italy. He loved everything about it apart from the football. Yeah. He actually mm. said the football was awful. It was all defending and, and, and whatnot. And for a, and a guy with a real attacking flair, he just yeah. wasn't interested. Mm. So uh, he only had um, one season for Torino. And then Matt Busby and Manchester United came in paying a, a British record uh, transfer fee, 115000 for him, bringing him back to Manchester. And that's really where the legend of Dennis Law began. <laughs> um, he was nicknamed the Stretford King and uh, was a real favourite with the Old Trafford faithful. Uh, and it's still really to this day, you know, you've got the statue outside of him, Best and Charlton. I yeah. mean, that's something. That's ridiculous. Isn't Those it? Those three at once. <laughs> he was, he, he was, I, don't, I don't know if we have a comparable... Sort of equivalent of that. I mean, people might talk about Javi and Iesta and Messi. I don't know. Yeah, it's a similar sort of thing, yeah, though, isn't it? It's that kind of level. He really chucked himself into uh, challenges, into uh, like overhead kicks and stuff. He loved yeah. an overhead You didn't kick. really see that much of like, well, proper it, volleys and stuff. And well, oh, I, yeah, I've seen clips of him scoring a couple of bicycle kicks. Mm. Maybe not the most sort of cleanly hit or whatnot, <laughs> but <laughs> back then it was a real rarity for yeah. a British player. He suffers stuff. from basically not being best or Charlton. He doesn't, he doesn't mm. get the sort of level of respect that the other two get. I mean, rightly or wrongly. I mean, you, if you, it's impossible. You could argue he was a better player than Charlton. Well, he didn't score as many goals as Charles. True, mm. you know, but I, I, I wouldn't agree with that. But I, well, one thing I would say is, every time you see clips of Dennis Law, obviously you can't watch him play now, but you, you think, oh, best, be rubbish. Best was good. <laughs> best was really good. <laughs> you know, the amount of, the amount of chances he must have got yeah. from Best is incredible. Really. His finishing was absolutely clinical, though. Oh, it? Every like time goal, both three, yeah. weighed him with headers despite being a he small was, man. Yeah, he was a great header of the ball. Great core strength, very str mm. st strong for his yeah. size. Can take players on. Yeah, I mean he, he the really accuracy was incredible with his shooting as well. You, you wonder, sort of, um, you know, the fact that he started off with a squint. You know, he had sort of he yeah. had it all correct and stuff. Mm. Didn't he? If if he had to sort of hone his ability that much because he was at a disadvantage, and then he sort of almost got a boost from it. I don't know. Yeah. Just he, he did score all manner of goals, didn't he? Mm. And he, and his qualities were, were unbelievable. Goal scoring, creating them, dribbling, heading, uh, like you say, you know, all the things you need to play football <laughs> yeah, yeah, at yeah. the very highest level. Yeah. One, 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 one could uh, argue. There, there's a great clip on, on YouTube where it's a free kick routine where he scores yeah, with Bobby Charlton. But again, he, he almost mucks it up. Though. He did almost <laughs> muck yeah. it up. <laughs> but, it, but you look at the look at how muddy was the pitch yeah. and, and the way he, he turns like, if this is the same one I'm talking about yeah. talk, where he sort of feeds it through and he does that wonderful sort of curve yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like back then you know with with, with the, with the weight of the ball the, the pitches weren't great condition you think man they were decent you know yeah, what I mean yeah. best best and especially best balance and sort of strength and, and ability to dribble on those pitches was, was really unlikely oh, yeah. but, but Law linked superbly with best and Charlton um, his days at Manchester United it really was absolutely incredible and the 90s uh, sorry in the 1963-64 season he scored 46 goals for most United Dennis Law and uh, that was uh, one of the main reasons that he was voted um, European Player of the Year the only Scottish player ever to have won it oh, yeah. um, he won the league uh, with Manchester United in 65 and 67 unfortunately he was injured and missed the 68 European Cup final with Benfica yeah he'd been injured mm -hmm. for a while he missed the semi-final as well I think. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he did play of course uh, in the uh, famous 3-2 uh, win at Wembley for the Scots yeah. Against the English, did did he sit on the ball? Am I right in saying there's a little story 
That apparently, <laughs> you know, see, even like Scotland were having a bit of a bit of fun, really, and they were taunting the opposition, and like Dennis Law was just dribbling away, and he just sat down on the ball. <laughs> I don't know whether I, I, some of that. Yeah, I did, I've heard that. I know, was, <laughs> Might be apocryphal. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah he's the second. He's the second ever top sc- second highest top scorer for United, isn't he? I think he's their top uh, FA Cup goal scorer as well. Uh, yeah, forty goals. I think he was in the forty goals in the, in the FA, FA Cup. Cup. That's <laughs> insane. Which yeah. was passed by Ian Rush in the nineties. Wow. Yeah, but it, um, incredible scoring record, really, for for a guy who wasn't an, an out and out centre forward, perhaps. Mm. Um, uh, 171 league goals in 309 games. And back then, I guess you were sort of fighting against your own lifestyle to a certain extent. Well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, imagine, yeah. imagine how good you were if you didn't like give up the fags, give up the crap <laughs> food. Don't forget, drink to also, you get an injury, then you're finished. Yeah. 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 Well, George Best said, "Oh, he was a great pal on and off the field." And you think, "Oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay." Yeah, we'll right. Read into that. You have sex with him as well, did you? <laughs> oh, George he bailed me out of all kinds of situations. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, you, interesting. Say the injuries. You know, into the seventies, he was starting to to pick up a few injuries, and then he was getting older, of course, and perhaps not quite the player. Although he still had you know bags of quality. But um, the management at United think thought that maybe he's had his time here, mm. so. Um, he was sold to City in uh, in 1973. Um, well, that's such an incredible run of success. Yeah. Right? It's a sustained amount of success, and there's always going to be... I mean, United will go through it again when Ferguson yeah. retires. They're going to have to have a bit of a change in the guard, and a lot of time, time of the older players will suffer from yeah. that. I mean, Chelsea, like, they might be going through it now. It does yeah. happen, you know. Mm. Also, so he had a knee injury, didn't he, which really, really badly yeah. affected him. He did, yeah. He missed a lot of games through that. Mm. His standout moment for Manchester City, without a doubt, was his last touch of a football in, in, in the Football League when he flicked the ball past uh, the United keeper at Old Trafford, condemning mm. them to a 1 0 defeat. Was it 1 0? Uh, yeah, I think uh, it, the, the point was that if even if they'd drawn, yeah. uh, they would have gone down anyway, but Manchester he didn't know that at the time. And, and he just thought, that face, yeah. that you, you'll, never see, you'll never see that again in football. He does the back heel, it comes from him, he does the back heel. Beautiful goal. Beautiful goal, but it was such an instinctive finish. And then he looks up and he realises what he's done. He loved those players, he played mm. with those players for such a long yeah. time. At Old Trafford. But it, in a Manchester derby. In actual fact, they could have United could have won five 0 still would have been relegated because yeah. of the yeah. results. But yeah, you, didn't, uh, you said Pete, you didn't but it, at the time. it is great that that was the case as well. Yeah, yeah. L- l- he must have felt so relieved. Yeah, everyone still says he relegated him. Anyway. I know it's, it's <laughs> annoying. It's one of those myths, isn't it? But, it's, <laughs> but he's, he felt guilty for years after, even yeah. though, as you say, mathematically, it wasn't the case. <laughs> well, he went further than that. He said he didn't want to play. He said he didn't want to play in the game. Well, that, but that was his last touch of the ball in, yeah. in club football. Yeah, he was immediately subbed off, wasn't he? I th- well, I think he chose to come off, didn't he? He just sort of walked off. Did he do that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it's true that he's cut, his face, he's just like a broken man. Yeah. Like people are like sort of slapping his face out of going, come on, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Let's have a but, smile But as out, you yeah. say, it showed what a professional he was <laughs> because the ball came over, <laughs> He's just yeah, done it and then twice about it. Yeah, to a job. And also, what, yeah. a sort of, what a good guy he was as well. Yeah. That he was yeah. in the Still is, probably. Yeah. The, 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 there's um, uh, one commentator for that game, which he just shouts, Dennis Law! What an irony! What an irony! <laughs> He's going. <laughs> um, which it was. His last um, game of football was in the 1974 World Cup with Scotland, which was the first time they'd qualified the Scots uh, since 1958, and they went out in the first round. I think without losing a goal, uh, without losing a game. Sorry, just on goal difference to Brazil, and uh, it was against Zaire. He didn't play two of the the, the group games, but he, he had 55 caps and 30 goals. Yeah, you know, John top scorer with Kenny Dalglish. He is, yeah. yeah. Two halls in there as well. A couple yeah. of halls, an in international, international hall. That is pretty yeah. rare. Uh, indeed, he came back from the World Cup, and and he actually hadn't chosen to retire after the World Cup per se. He he, he just he came back and he realised he wouldn't be first choice for Manchester City. And he, I think, you know, maybe the Manchester United, the relegation and, and the goal and whatnot. Mm. He, uh, that was him. He was yeah. done, uh, and and he um, he retired from from the game. I mean, since then he's been a pundit, inducted uh, into the English Football Hall of Fame, an inaugural member. Yeah. Uh, 2010, he became a patron of Football Aid, taking over from um, the late Sir Bobby Robson. I liked it when he said uh, when he was asked, um, "Why did, did he ever consider going into management?" And he said, "Never." Dealing with footballers, no thanks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Really nice. nice. Um, uh, Dennis Burkamp was named after him. Yeah, mm. hey, that's right. Absolutely true. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Quite a nice. But thing they one. couldn't. I don't think they could allow. He wasn't allowed to have one end in his name. Yeah. Because yeah. in, in Holland, in Dutch, there might be a, a female name, so he had to have two ends. But he was named after Dennis. Yeah, a, bit, Lord, a yeah. bit close to Denise, I think it was. But we'll end with Denise quote Bergkamp from, would just <laughs> still have been a wonderful player. <laughs> yeah, he would. Yeah. We'll end with a quote from his friend Jimmy Greaves. Jimmy simply said, "He was my favourite player of all time. He had everything. The end." There it is, Dennis Law into the Dean Wendell Hall of Fame. Finn.
<laughs> talking uh, talking about your family connection to Dennis Law. Oh yeah, uh, Luke. My nan's sister, Auntie Lil, we call her, uh-huh. um, looked just like Dennis Law. <laughs> I mean, it's ha- it was harrowing, but it was hilarious. So, strictly a connection, is it? Kind no. of is. She, he looked, she looked just like him. Can we have a picture? But, but she, no. a picture the for the well, I'll just give you a picture she... of Dennis Law and say that is my <laughs> auntie. Yeah, you won't know the difference. She did relegate Manchester United. <laughs> <laughs>